midpoint and distance. So what is a midpoint and what is a length? Basically what we want to find is what's the halfway point of a segment, and we also want to find how long is this segment, right? And so that's what we're working on in this unit. So we'll come back to that one. So we need some prerequisite skills. So I'm going to give you, if you can take out maybe another piece of paper, or if you can find room on this one, I don't think you will, uh, and see if you can answer these questions. And then we'll talk about it. I just want to put up what I got for these and let's see how we compare. And if you didn't finish, that's all right. It's okay. So let's see. Now, did you get a, I got zero five. Are there more choices? Did anybody draw a picture? So that compares with actually the negative three, five. And then B would be seven, five. What? It says find the point between. It does not say find the point. It just says find the point between. So I picked this one. Anybody pick a different one? You know what you picked, Julia? Yeah. That's another one. Yeah, Amy? What'd you pick? Any point with a Y of 5. Any point with a Y of 5. Well, what about 9, 3, 5? And that's to be between negative 3 and 7. So a y of 5 and an x between negative 3 and 7. Can I include negative 3 and 7? Ooh. I don't know. If I want to be between, strictly speaking, I guess not. Right? What? I think the answer would be 6.9 repeating is 5. 6.9 repeating is 7. So I don't know if that's the, if you want to be the exact same end point. 6.9 repeating is 7. Yes, think about it. Uh, yes. Isn't the midpoint possible of one between the two? Yeah, midpoint is, but we don't know what that is yet. I'm not asking for that. Just any point in between. That's all I wanted you to do. Um, how do you find the mean? Right? You add the two numbers, divide by two. So negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. Divide by 2, you get negative 3. Solving this guy, there's a couple ways to approach it. Um, how'd you do that? One get x by itself, right? How'd you do it? We don't know. Oh, what are you doing? Why did I multiply both sides by two? Why did you choose two? Yeah. Well, cross reduce. Yeah, what happens here? It goes away. And we're left with x plus 7 equals 10. We use that subtraction property of equality. x is 3. How do you check your work? You plug it in. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5. Now this is a calculator activity, right? Mm -hmm. I think I got a calculator up here. So you just uh, you type in uh, the square root of 30. Now what, what do you think it's approximately going to be before you do anything? The number between what two whole numbers? Can we do that without a calculator? Where square root of 30 is between what two whole numbers? Five and six because it's between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. So I need a five point something. And to the nearest hundred, 5.48, right? Because that means two decimal places. Um, square root of five plus the square root of 20. Right, so I'm getting 6.71. And now simplest form, oh goodness gracious, do you remember how to reduce radicals? Yes? Who needs a refresher? Okay. Uh, you know how. Who needs a refresher? Please tell me if you do. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to do the square root of 48. You may have learned two methods. Uh, one method is to say, think of all the perfect squares. Uh, I'm just going to write the first few of them. 9, 16, 25, right? Uh, you know, we, we work this, and then we say, what is there a perfect square factor? What's the biggest perfect square factor? And 48 is 16 times 3, so that's 16 times 3. And then I say, oh, the square root of 16, I can take that out as 4, and square root 3 stays in time. So that's one way of doing it. You may have learned using the prime factorization method, which says, well, gee, what are the prime factors? So I always start with the smallest prime factor that is divisible. So 2 goes into 48 24 times. And 2 goes into 24 12 times. And 2 goes into that 6 times. And 
two goes into the three times. So two times two times two times two times three is 48. Isn't that good times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times three is 48. And then you look for pairs, because I know what the square root of two times two is, it's two. Here's another pair. So if all this was under the radical sign, this comes out as a two, and this one comes out as a two, and we're multiplying them, and what's left inside the three. So you may have learned one or both of these last year. So make sure you know how to do that. That's important to kind of be able to be pretty smooth with reducing the radicals. So are there questions on reducing the radicals? We're good, okay. All right, so that is kind of just some prerequisite skills, things you kind of have to know how to do. So midpoints. Um, what is a midpoint? And it divides the segment into two congruent parts. And we talked about congruent last time. I'm not going to pick up the pile again. But congruent is uh, copies, clones of each other, uh, same size. And when we have a segment and we say M is a midpoint, that means that AM and MB are congruent segments. They have the same length, same distance, same size. And if I have congruent segments, I use these little hash marks to say they're congruent. It's a little notation that says, this piece is congruent to that piece. So you just put these little marks here. Um, if you are not a person who likes drawing diagrams or drawing pictures, you have to get over it because you will be drawing tons and tons of diagrams. It's extremely important in geometry. Okay, what's a segment? Bisector, ooh. A sector is like a section, right? A cut. And that means two. So you're cutting it in two, but it's more than just cutting it in two. You're cutting it into two congruent pieces. So a segment bisector is something that cuts through a segment, and it's a bisector. It makes a midpoint at that point of intersection. So it can be a line. It can be just a point. It can be a ray. It can be a line segment. And it intersects a segment such that you're getting two congruent pieces intersects at the midpoint, the bisector. So you need to know that word, important to know what a bisector is. Questions about a bisector? Easy, see? Okay, so let's look at this example here. And this one's on your paper. Point M is the midpoint of VW. Now I am giving you a picture. If I didn't give you a picture, once you see that, before you do anything else, you draw it. I've got segment VW, M is the midpoint, and I would put these little congruent marks in it. That shows me midpoint, that I understand what's going on. Okay, is everybody with me? I know this is kind of uh, elementary, but we, we, we forget this now. When we haven't followed it, we'll see it later. We won't know what it is. Find the length of VM. So it's telling me it's 4 x 4. That's the length. Oh, they want the number. So how does this work? What do we know about VM and MW, given that M is the midpoint? They're what? They are congruent to each other. So what does that mean? What's equal? The lengths of these two lengths. So let's solve it. So that means that VM equals MW. Remember, when I don't put the little line on top, I'm talking about the length of VM equals the length of MW. And so 4x minus 1 equals 3x plus 3. So now you can be working on this um, in your notes here and see if we can figure out what's x, and then go back and answer the question. Subtracting so x, add y. And four. And so vm equals four x minus one equals four times four minus one. So did anybody get the same thing I just got? Well, you can work on your own pace there, but this is what I'm getting for VM. Is there a way to check that I'm, I'm correct or at least make me feel better about this? I say that loud, what? Plug it into MW. Why is that a smart thing to do? Because it is. She said, well, put it in here too. How come? What do I expect to get here, Joseph? Same number, midpoint, same distance. Just as another check, I'm going to plug it into MW. And so if 
that's 12 plus 3, 15. I feel pretty good now. I'm, fe I'm feeling pretty good. That's the right answer. So it takes a second. Check it. Why not? Some questions, right? Midpoint. Lengths are equal. Set them equal. That's easy. All right. So I think I've got some new tries here. Identify the segment bisector PQ. And I, all I mean by that is what's the segment bisector of this first one? What's cut in half? Who knows? Nobody. Huh? Oh, Joseph, what is it? And then it's your segment, and it's a red. So I want to first say, tell me what it is. Then I want you to find this distance. So just try these two right here. Everybody may not be good, but a lot of people are. Um, let's see how we did here. So the segment bisector on that first one is right M N. I got six for the length of PQ. Why? Because these two pieces are congruent. This piece is three, so this piece has to be three. If this is a bisector, that's the midpoint. And add them together using segment addition postulate, I get six. This one we have to solve an equation. I know those two lengths are equal. So I can set them equal. Subtract the two x and add the seven. I'm getting x equals six. Um, and so let's see, I want to find PQ. Let me put it in here, right? So that's going to be five times six minus seven. I'm getting 30 minus seven, that's 23. I'm actually going to do it again on this one. This one should be 23 as well. Yeah. This is just a check on myself. So I'm getting 23 again. Yeah, awesome. So what's the answer to the question? The whole thing, 23 plus 23 is 26. Yes, ma'am. Question? Amanda? Um, I, don't, I don't really under, understand. I mean, I thought a bisector was a point. A bisector is a point, a ray, a line, a segment that cuts through another segment or line, one segment I should say, if at its midpoint. If I use M or M? M, well, M in is what we're using. It's this little thing right here. It's cutting through it. It's the ray. This one, it's line L. They both cut through, and here is that point of intersection. That's your midpoint. But the actual bisector here is a line. And the bisector here is a ray. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? No. No? OK. okay. Well, a point. That, that is the point. That is the midpoint. But how did we get it? We sent a line through to cut it in half. But there how are did we get this way? Yes, there are. But so this is the particular set of points that cut it in half. But right? which came first? The line or the point? I don't know. But how do you know that it's the line that gets there? Not because I'm looking at it and drawing up the picture. I don't we go by the diagram. I really don't understand. I mean, if the point the inverse would never be the point, and the line would just be a thing. But we're looking at a series of points. There is a ray that cuts this segment, and that's called the bisector. There is a line that cuts the segment. Why can't it be a point? Though? It isn't. I don't understand. You know what? We have to take this offline, okay? Come back to me when we're done with this and I'll talk to you about it. Okay? All right. Um, now, in the coordinate plane, we have midpoints as well, right? So where is the center? And it's still going to cut this into two congruent pieces. It's still a midpoint. Whoops. Moving it up. Um, what's this one? So how do we find it using a formula? And we can use a formula here. And it looks complicated. So in a plane, if you've got a point and it's x1, y1, and if you've got another point and it's x2, y2, the way we find the midpoint is we average the values of the x's and we average the values of the y's. Um, so let's see, x1 plus x2 over 2. Isn't that how you average x's? Take the two points, add them, divide by two. That's going to give you the x value of the midpoint. If you want to find the y value, you average the values of the y's. Okay. So let's see. So I take a, let's see what that is. S is 4 comma 2. And let's see if my R's are horrible. R. Is four comma two? No, I'm looking at two. Okay, R is one comma negative three. So if I want the midpoint, if I want the midpoint of this, I'm just going to call that point M. You say 
4 plus 1 over 2, that's your x value, and 2 plus negative 3, a 2 plus a minus, it's just a minus, right? Over 2. And uh, let's see what we have here. 5 halves and negative 1 half. 5 halves is the same as 2 and a half, so let's see, that's 1, 2 halves, 4 halves, 5 halves, go down negative half. That's an important. Average the x's, average the y's. We found the midpoint on um, two segments on the of uh, two lines. I'm sorry, a segment on the coordinate plane. And that's it. That's the formula. And again, it looks hard. It looks hard, right? Hard. No, no this is horrible. Average the x's, average the y's. You have a midpoint. So let's see. Find the endpoints given the midpoint. Uh oh. All right. So now I am looking at. Yes, the, the second example, uh, towards the bottom of the page, but not quite there, right above the try. The midpoint of JK is M2, comma 1. M2, comma 1. That's the midpoint. It's not an endpoint, it's the midpoint. One endpoint is J at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it wants you to find K, the other endpoint. So far we've got this. If it's the midpoint, that means somewhere over here, I've got a value k, and I want to find the coordinates of k. How do I do that? You think you know? Yeah, I think I've done it before, actually. You basically rearrange the, I rearrange the equation to make it fit, at, maybe, to solve for x2 instead of m, and we'll solve for the rearrange equation. All right, so yeah. let's say, okay. So if that's J, and K is some value I don't know, right? I'm just going to call it X and Y. I don't know what it is. But I do know what N is. It's 2 comma 1. So the equation is X1 plus X2 over 2, right? That'll give me the X. So that means take the average of those two things, right? What's the average of 1 and X? I'll add them and divide by 2, right? And what's that going to give me? This. Because when you average the x's, you get the x of the midpoint. So I average the x's, and I'm getting the x of the midpoint. Now I have to solve this equation for x. Multiply both sides by 2. We did this um, when we started as a prerequisite skill. Subtract 1. x is 3. Then I do the same thing for the y's. Average the y's to get the y of the midpoint. So I'm going to average them. Add those two together. And divide by 2, I should get a 1, because that's the value of the y of my midpoint. Multiply both sides by 2. Subtract 4. And then y equals negative 2. So what is k? k is 3, negative 2. And I do a check just to make sure. Did I do this right? 1 plus 3 is 4 over 2. 2. 4 plus negative 2 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. That works. Yeah. Yeah. You can say, look at this slope. It's one, two, three, one. If I want to get to another point, I can go one, two, three, one. What are the coordinates? One, two, three. And then two. So if it's a nice, nice little graph like this, you can do that. Sometimes though they're decimals or fractional, it's a little bit harder, but absolutely you can use slope to do that. Very nice observation. So make sense or not make sense? Ish. But we'll find out. Um, I want you to try finding the midpoints on these tries. Let's take a look at, at again, everybody may not be done at this point, but let's see how we did so far. So for the first one, did we get um, the length of AM to be 10? Eight? Uh-oh. X plus 5 equals 2X? Right, did we not get 10? Zero point x plus five equals two x because whoops, they're the same thing. So x equals five. Plug it in. Five plus five is ten. Three times five is ten. That's good. And they just want um, a m. So that's yeah. S equals. For what? Can we say what? S equals. S. Um, for the the g. Just say s equals. Yeah. All right. Let's let's just one at a time. I was working on a. You're working on b. So somebody said they did not get 10, so I 
do that. We okay with B? Questions on B? Questions on C? Questions on D? Well, S is a point, it's a, uh, so you have to give the coordinates of S. So I think this would be it. You could say the X equals negative three and Y, is done, but it's like Y, Y, some sort of, just give me the coordinates. Yes, ma'am. Y is five. So which one? For this one? All right, well, let's see. So S is the thing I don't know, right? That's my X, Y. So that means X plus five over two is one, right? And Y plus one over two is four. That's that up right? So this one is X plus five is two. So X equals negative three. This one is y plus one equals eight, so y equals seven. Did you find this error either on mine or on yours? Have you found it? Are we okay with this? This is one that you have to know how to do. So if you're just like bluffing it right now, say, yeah, I get it, I do, and you don't, please ask. Okay, all right, let's look at distance. All right, that's on the back. Distance is the length of a line in the coordinate plane. To do this, you, um, you're going to have to know some information here. Now, first of all, if it's vertical or horizontal, easy, right? Well, we've already looked at these using the rule of postulate. Uh, essentially, you're counting boxes. But another way to think about it is if this is point x1 and this is point x2, it's the absolute value of the difference of those x values. Now, this one, because I'm going that way, it's going to be the absolute value of the y values, right? And that means these have y values? Y1 and y2? Are we good with this? Because if we're good with this, this is half the battle. Okay? Now, what if they're not horizontal or uh, vertical? You've got something wrong like this. So here's where our distance formula comes in. And it uses something called the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you were at Eagle Ridge last year, we did go through this a bit at the end of the SOLs. You may remember kind of doing that. Yeah, and I'm not sure all the teachers did, but we, we were supposed to. And if you didn't come to the school, that doesn't help you, right? The Pythagorean theorem, we're going to go into it a lot more um, when we get there. But it's a right triangle. The side opposite the right triangle is called a hypotenuse. And it's the longest side in that triangle, because that's the biggest angle. These little sides are called legs. So if you square the legs and add them, you get the square of the hypotenuse. Or a squared plus B squared is C squared. So this was 3 and this was 4. 3 squared plus 4 squared will be your C squared. 9 plus 16 equals C squared. Oops. 25 equals C squared. So 25 is C squared, but C? 5. C could also be negative 5 if I was to just solve that equation, but it doesn't make sense to have a negative length, so we only take the positive result. So that is the Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm going to write the Pythagorean theorem a little bit differently. So if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, I just use the symmetric property of equality to it again. How do I get c by itself? What would you do to get from here to here? How'd you know if c squared is 25, how'd you know it's 5? So, uh, What's that thing? Radical? Yeah, the radical. You basically took the square root of both sides. Now I know what the square root of c squared is, it's c. But I don't know I'm adding, right? You can't pull them apart if you're adding. So it just stays like this. This is the distance formula. That's it. The distance formula is the Pythagorean theorem uh, solved for C. That's all it is. Now the question is what's A and what's B? So what you do when you have a segment, here it is, here it is. You kind of complete that right triangle. And we say that this squared plus that squared is going to be this squared. Well, what is this? I'm using the rule of postulate. It's the difference of uh, those two x coordinates. Square it, because that's the Pythagorean theorem. It's the difference of these y coordinates. Square it, and take the square root of the whole thing. So the distance formula is complicated, but you trust me it is. And if you don't understand what you're doing, it, it gets confused very often with the midpoint. So when I do these, I never think, what's the distance formula? I think, what's the Pythagorean theorem? Because I find this is pretty easy for me to remember. 
And then I just say, oh, with A and B. It's that real cross show to track. Yes? You have to remember, I, I don't think they are on the formula sheet, so you have to know them. So that's why I say, if you can remember A squared plus B squared is C squared, you can remember this a lot easier than trying to memorize this mess. Because I think it's a little complicated. But I, I, can, I can remember this. At least that's a lot easier anyway. So this is just talking about that a little bit more. But let's do an example. Uh, let's see if this one's on here. Yeah, I'm on the middle of page uh, two here. So what's my x1, y1? Does it matter which one's x1, y1? No, let's pick this one. And let's pick that one as x2, y2. You could have gone the other way, it really doesn't matter. And remember, what we're doing is we're kind of secretly making this right triangle. I want this square plus that square to be that square. So my x1, y1 is uh, 2, 3. My x2, y2 is 4, negative 1. Now I want to find this distance. I'm looking for this. And that's the difference between those x values. So if this one is at 2 and this one is at 4, what's the distance between 2 and 4? 2. And then y2 minus y1 says, so what's the difference between these? Now think about it. What's the distance between 4 and negative 1? How many hops? Between 4 and negative 1. And um, you can also use the um, the rule of postulate, which will take the absolute value of three minus negative one. What have I done? Oh, yeah. Which way? Because 
squaring it. So what happens is, like, let's say that was a 1 and that was a 3. So if I did x2 minus x1, I'd get 2 squared. If I did this way, I'd get negative 2 squared. So it does not matter which way you subtract them because you're squaring that number. It's always going to be a positive. Great point. Uh, try the other one. Let's just make sure we're okay. Try it. And I, I see some of you still working. I got this. See some heads nodding up and down. Are any heads nodding the wrong way? Are you okay with this? Please ask if you don't. You might have just kind of looked through the triangle here and say, well, this is one, two, three, four, five. And this is one, two, three, four. Or you can do the, um, use that rule with postulate. The distance between two and, oh, I didn't count these right, one, two, four. Why did I use any of that postulate, right? It's one, two, three, four. The distance between two and negative two is four. The distance between negative one and three is four. So it's the square root of four squared plus four squared, <coughs> which is the square root of 16 plus 16. Noticing this is a perfect square, so I'm just going to rewrite this as 16 times two because I can see that four point out. Questions? Comments? We got it?